Mark, thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Sean. Mark, uh, PECAS was founded in 1852. It's been around for a long time. You've been at the helm as CEO for 20 years now? 20 years? That's it, so. Right. In that time, what's been the most exciting development for this company? Well, uh, I believe what we developed was we're coming from East Germany and uh, of course now develop it to a modern Western company that's been a big challenge. And if we look at the content, um, our new value added system, which stretches along many things. To start with, we, we're coming from a seed company, seed technology company. We now do the, all the grain handling and now we've also bought additional companies in the grain processing. So we go from seed preparation right down to the grain processing. And also we do a value added um, chain coming from wheat seed to um, or grain seed to any kind of oil seed, corn, soya, etc. right down to the fine seed. So all we cover all the seed um, which there is on the market. Plus we have a, a what we call the Petka's ties, a value added stream where we start with technology which means developing the machines, manufacturing the machines, made in Germany, all of them, and um, de developing all the solutions, let's say for corn, the total value added chain for a corn seed plant, including the corn dryer, etc., calibration, chemical coating, etc. And those, um, uh, then we have the innovation. T for technology, I for innovation, which is our sister company called Röber Institute, which is a synonym of Petkus. Röber was a former owner, so it's innovation. And then we have the engineering company, Petkus Engineering, which gives to the customer the service of total turnkey. Mm -hmm. Now turnkey means not only um, putting up the plant on a piece of greenfield, but it means including the civil planning, civil works, um, a premises allowance, uh, etc., etc. Like we did recently in Serbia, a full turnkey plant including civil um, property management, etc., etc. for KWS. And then of course the service. Last, Petkus Ties, the S stands for service, where we have 17 Petkus companies in all over the world, where we always try to be close to our customers to deliver those engineering services mm. or innovative products always close to the customer and be close to him if he has some problems. Mm. So that's what we call the full value added mm. um, process which we have developed in the last 20 years. That's a huge scope. That's a huge scope, you say it, and most important of course, and which should also answer your question, is of course the development of staff. When we started, we were a producer. When, when I bought the company in 1994, uh, we were a, a producer of a large volume of a small scope of machinery. Mm -hmm. And so was the skill of the staff. Now, if we do several um, seed sorts, if we go into grain handling, if we go into grain processing, in several air, in all of the areas in the world, mind you, we have 95% export, only 5% domestic business. Mm. Um, so we need a totally different set of staff, of skills, and so on. And we needed to develop what we call centers of competencies, mm -hmm. and they are not all in in Germany. So we have, for instance, in the sunflower, our center of competence is in Serbia. If we have tropical corn and soya, it's with our daughter company in Brazil, Petkus mm -hmm. Brazil, uh, and so on. So if it's um, uh, pulses, it's Australia. And so it's the centers of competences, which then are amalgamated or coordinated by what we call the Petkus Academy, right. which is centralized in Germany, where we try to coordinate all the know-how to make it a good schooling base for our staff. Right. Speaking of staff, I understand that uh, your engineers have developed the, the first green dryer mm -hmm. system. No fossil fuels being used. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, that follows our general strategy where we say if we have five general product lines, so the sorting, the drying, the coating, the conveying, the storage, in each of those lines we look at, a, uh, at an innovative point. And um, first, of course, the first checklist we have is where we say um, which uh, innovation would follow our mission, um, strong seed, healthy grain. Right. But if we look at drying, there's another aspect, of course, which is the energy consumption, which is always 
an issue. So a customer, a client pays X for the, for the purchase price, but he pays way more than X for running the machine over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been, of course, the fuel to, to, uh, for the drying. And of course, then we look at, um, at uh, ways how we can use the process material which the customer has to take this and convert it and to make warm air at the end of the day. And that could be, uh, in this case of that article, it was about hot water. There was a lot of hot water uh, in the process of this client, of this mm -hmm. particular client, which we could use to create um, um, uh, hot air. It, it could be corn cobs, where we have now developed in our Hungarian um, daughter company, uh, we have um, developed a corn cob burning um, technology, um, which we then of course use to fuel the um, uh, corn cob drying houses for the seed corn. Right. And, and that, th those are the aspects when we develop a project or a product in the um, uh, Röba Innovation Center, we always look at the mission first. Does this innovation fulfill any kind in our um, strong seed or healthy grain, or is it a, a lasting, which would be a lasting benefit like energy consumption? This is always the prior thing on our checklist. So you've also just recently launched the next generation of gravity tables. Yes. Some big changes in this uh, next evolution. Can you tell us a little bit about how this, how this is going to impact the business? Yeah, uh, truly uh, gravity is a very complicated machine for the user and there's a lot of discussion, can we go without a gravity? For instance, if we go for optical sorting or so on. Mm. Uh, we personally believe that um, uh, we need gravity because it um, selects by gravity, which an optical sorter does obviously not do. So let's say we need a gravity. Then the question was how good or how bad, how effective are those gravity? And when we um, looked at our own gravity first and then at other gravities, we found that the management of air, of air stream, is done very accidental or badly or um, not planned at all. Right. And uh, so um, again in our Riba Institute we took some really advanced um, yeah, aeronautic uh, uh, engineers, uh, airstream engineers which came from the car industry and uh, which then did some analysis with very innovative simulation methods to first get make sure that if we, s to make it very pragmatic, suck in air through a round tube to make sure that on a rectangular space of a gravity we get the same speed of air, pressure of air at every square centimeter. So that is probably one of the most innovative things that we have um, developed a certain kind of air mechanism, air control to, de uh, to develop uh, the right air speed, right con air control. Then besides that we have a totally new um, dynamic force uh, compensation system. What does that mean? It means that if you have a gravity table which uh, delivers a lot of dynamic forces and gives a problem for the user if this gravity is on the first, second, whatever floor, mm -hmm. it gives a lot of shakings into the building. And so we have um, developed a counterbalancing system which um, swallows those dynamic forces nearly to zero. So the times of using a strong cement fundament foundation is over. It's over, it's just over. So we don't need any um, strong foundation other than the mass of the machine, to carry the mass of the machine. So that's uh, strikingly new. And um, But let's say technologically wise, I think the airstream uh, management which we have developed um, is, really, is really something and um, that will definitely um, revive the necessity of the gravity. And what kind of an impact does uh, this, these changes have on the efficiency? How close are we getting to 100% separation? Well, that in percentage is now hard to say if we're looking <laughs> at corn and wheat and, and, and so on and so forth, but that's hard. But um, compared to the machines we see in the market, we've added a huge um, efficiency curve there. Right. I think we revived the interest uh, in the gravity. When, when we started talking about new gravities, people said, oh, we don't even know if it's a machine, so many things to need it to be set up, etc. It's so difficult, etc., etc. So, um, of course, we needed to 
develop some electronics as well to recipe memory etc etc with our new machine has um, so to make life easier for the user that's a, that's a, or I should add another point what do we do with the middlings on a gravity so we have a, a special we have developed a special on deck tech on deck on the gravity on deck technology which um, automates um, how you uh, get rid of those middlings Mm. Well, there's a little bit of a trick which I will not display here, but <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's an interesting feature anyway. Right. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so under the slogan "Wanted Power Girls," mm -hmm. Petkis got involved with uh, Germany's Girls' Day, yeah. having young women um, exciting insight into working, and uh, and I think Petkis has really taken this on as an important uh, important component. Can you talk a little bit about women in the seed industry yeah, and that, what, what your take is on that? That's a very interesting topic, Sean. Um, First, as a result, I must say we are having more and more women in our organization from the top. Mm. Let's say our president of Petkus China is a lady. Um, let's say the chief technologist in Petkus Russia is a lady. Mm. So um, we have women in all kinds of um, places of the hierarchy. And um, maybe if we would have more women, that's what we think, in all kinds of hierarchy, we would have less our wars in the world. Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, to come back to your question, um, yeah, we put a lot of um, value to ladies. They have certain strengths, um, and that doesn't, that's in the seed industry, that's in any industry, I believe, um, where um, their way of handling things is beneficial. Of course, we have different, uh, in different countries, we have different cultures. Mm -hmm. Let's take Russia for an example. And uh, when we began, when we began back coming back to Russia in 1994, um, there was a lot of um, very ambitious young um, female um, artists uh, there, which uh, yeah, which did good progress, did good well for Petkus. Right, that's great. Um, a great initiative and good for leading the seed industry. We could definitely mm -hmm. take some lessons from that. Yeah, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for your time. Thanks, Ron. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>